Hi from me, Roy Mistach, and welcome to Derech Eretz, The Way of the World. In today's show, Ray Perkel talks about changing lives. We visit Astra Jewish Sheltered Employment and meet the founder of Super Troopers, Kerry Hoffman. God said in Genesis, let there be light. He separated the light from darkness for a reason. God saw that the light was good, so God separated the light from the darkness. This light can be used to change society, spread a positive message, and to expel the darkness of human suffering. Ray Perkle elaborates further. One of my greatest sources of inspiration is uh, the words of King David. And it's, uh, it's fascinating to me how universally accepted and how universally they are sources of inspiration, the words of Psalms are. So one of the things that King David points out, Ki omarti oilam chesed yibone. Because I have declared, this is King David quoting God, the world is built on kindness. Now that's, if you think about it just for a moment, that's self-evident because um, God being the infinite, indefinable, ultimately transcendent being, He's not lacking anything. He didn't need to create a world. What motivated God to create the universe was is based on a mystical principle that the sages teach us, Teva Hatov Lahetiv. The nature of good, of anything which is good, any being that is good, is to impart goodness. So being that God, in, in anyone's perception is the ultimate embodiment of goodness at a level which is beyond our ability to really understand with our limited rational minds. If God is the ultimate infinite good, then it goes without say that it's inherent in his nature, so to speak, to impart good. So he creates a universe to which he can be beneficent. That's the underlying meaning of King David's beautiful words, the world is built upon kindness. God's kindness, his willingness, his desire to impart good is inherent in everything that exists. So our job is to be in harmony with that. It's, it's commonly, I think, misunderstood that philanthropy means donating fat sums of money to charity. Now. That's not necessarily, I mean, the word philanthropy means love of humanity. So we express that in a multitude of ways. And uh, a human being who makes the willing choice to transcend his own selfishness, that default condition um, <clears throat> where our own survival and our own comfort takes precedence over everything else that exists, when we transcend that and we realize that there's something much more meaningful for us to aspire to, so then we, we naturally and, and, and much, much more comfortably and more enthusiastically will give not only of, of money that we have available to us to share, but time. We give of ourselves. We give emotional support to people that need it. We give of our com compassion. We give of our understanding. We share our wisdom and our insight, our knowledge, our re our, all our resources. So philanthropy for me is, is about all of that. Astra Jewish Sheltered Employment Center provides a comprehensive service to members of the Cape Jewish community who have special needs. The workers enjoy the dignity of being occupied daily, which enhances their self-esteem, while at the same time giving them the opportunity for social contact. Astra was started in 1950 by a Dr. Louis Mervish who found there was a need in the Jewish community of Cape Town to have a place where people who couldn't find regular employment could go and spend their days or be trained to work on the open labour market. The centre started and filled the need for people to spend their days here and less and less people were able to be placed on the open market. 
we've got five different workshops, all of whom activities are coordinated by a supervisor, offering different um, craft work. There's a needlework room, there's woodwork, there's a paint shop, and also the coffee shop started off as a placement for people with special needs who've been trained to work in a coffee shop environment. The workshop has developed into an incredible social enterprise where the hallmark of the product made is quality and people will buy out of sympathy once or twice but if you make a quality product they'll come back for more and more and that's what sustains our workshop and um, there's a lot of pride in the work that's achieved here. When I came here the 21st of February 1973, I started here, the stamp room. And uh, since then, I've been happy with my stamps and being with all my friends here. In the sewing room, there's a multitude of products being made from dolls, where it's a division of labor where different workers are involved in creating something. And then everything, um, in the sewing room is finished professionally by a seamstress. So the quality is superb of what we create. We have a whole um, section making beautiful Judaica work. So beautiful challah covers, Torah covers, curtains for the different synagogues who do support us. And we're proud to say that our products go all over the world. When I first came here on the 6th of June in 1976, I joined the centre as a solo artist and over the 42 years that has transpired we have been given more beautiful people to work with and I've been blessed now to work with a team of six girls and we work together all together with the, with the aim of producing the most beautiful work and the feeling of being at Astra Centre is so beautiful you cannot imagine. It's a joy to wake up and jump out of bed every morning and come to work here in the, to the most beautiful atmosphere. Lisa works in the sewing room and this group has produced the most wonderful things and some of which are in the stores and we've been down to the stores and to have a look at them and she's proudly held them and shown I helped to make this, this teddy. She's very proud, I'm very proud. Everybody who works at the centre works together in a team and I think each person has a sense of pride in the role that they play, however big or however small. And we try and encourage that because it just makes people feel more valued and adds enormous value to their daily lives, staff and workers. I'm one of the volunteers who come here. Um, and my day is Wednesday mornings and I love this group of people. I've worked my whole life quite hard and this, I work here because I can and I know it does these people good. I'm the painter, I've paint, been painting walkers and dolls houses for the past few years. I was always at home, there's nothing to do. I found something to get up and get dressed and go and work. I've been working here for 22 years, 94. I paint, I do very fine work there. My line is fine work on even sign writing for like companies. The lettering, I could do that. It's so fun my work. I'm also an artist too. Our restaurant is also run as a quality catering service, a quality place to come for meals or celebrations and the role that the coffee shop has played in terms of the workers is that it's helped to destigmatize disability in the eye of the public because not everybody in the public has the opportunity to interact with somebody with disability but at the coffee shop they have that opportunity and it's just wonderful how that has helped our workers who work here to feel acknowledged and they enjoy the interaction with the public. 17 years ago, this wonderful opportunity had come to me and I thought, well, I can do so many things to help others, but in retrospect, it's what they've done for me. I, I, I don't think there's a day that I don't get home and I think, 
that this has become my extended family. Um, I've, I've been given a real purpose in life to make a difference in other people's lives. But I can honestly say the best, best part of my day is when I can come here and I can, I can feel that I'm connecting on a very, very deep level with people on this soul level and that when we, when we share, whether it's something that's painful or something that's really happy, we really share it on a very, very deep and, and personal level. And um, I can honestly say that has made me a much better person. We have got three residential facilities catering um, to the needs of 26 adults. So in the one house we have 10 people, the other two eight and eight. Each house is run independently with their own personalities and offering activities in the houses according to what's offered. My daughter lives in the residence across the road. She's developed huge independence. She um, has a new family in a sense. They eat together. She makes her own bed, which she may not have done that well at home, but she does it here and she follows the rules and she feels part of a, of a family. It's, it's been the most enriching experience for me to really to see people transform into social beings, to develop their self-confidence, and a huge aspect is to see people, the social aspect. There are people here who were very socially isolated, who've come in, who've got friends, who are going out for dinner, going to movies, being really active on weekends, and it's really changed their lives as well as the family. From the beginning, she arrived here shy and anxious, wearing a hoodie with headphones in her ears, playing loud music, trying to block out everything. And over a period of not so long a while, perhaps in the first few months, she relinquished the hoodie, not the music, and started to engage and to participate. And I think it's been, it was such a relief that she didn't have to perform for anyone, that she could feel part of a team, be with like-minded people, and have as a great sense of herself. From the point of view of a schizophrenia, a lot of us here come to work every day. We have a purpose in our lives, and we're not left to sit and think and mope because we're busy and we're we're doing things and we are functioning well and it would be a pity to, to mope around all day at home. That's why I think the purpose is to come here. I think the Derek Eretz for me means to reach people's potential, to allow people to develop um, their own skills and learn skills that maybe they didn't know they had. I think the Derek Eretz of the centre is that it works on truth, reality, authenticity. It's nothing, it's, it's just being open and honest and dealing with issues as they are and trying to help find ways to manage them, solutions to make life better. Super Troopers started with a pot of soup and a realization that Cape Town communities can create meaningful change through small acts of kindness. Founder Kerry Hoffman was inspired to connect with the most marginalized. Instead of aiming to solve the problem, Super Troopers provide specific events and services that bring homeless people some dignity and attention. I was born in Durban, but I moved to Cape Town when I was six weeks old, and I grew up in Malmesen in, um, with an incredible family that I feel truly blessed with, um, a family that really instilled unconditional love and support, and I see, you know, how, how grateful I am that that's really um, 
instilled a foundation for me in what I'm doing at the moment. She's always had this heart of wanting to help people and have, um, she's got this unbelievable um, drive in going beyond the extra mile. And she's been quite a loner and she decided three and a half years ago that she wasn't going to talk about something anymore and she was always had a soft, really soft spot for helping the homeless. And it's really become bigger than herself now. I don't want to see people in their, their struggles, but more in who they are beyond their struggles. Um, I believe that we're all powerful, we all have some kind of capability and creating this space for everyone allows people to show up in the way that they can. So it's, it does feel like it's a bit of a divine um, coming together. Um, it feels a very, um, it's, a, it's a beautiful journey that has grown from an authentic um, space. So a Super Trooper Social is all about bringing people together from homeful troops to homeless troops, um, just really bridging the gap and we focus on restoring dignity through providing basic human needs but as well as you know sharing skills, sharing talents. Um, the, the guys on the street, they give each other haircuts every month, we celebrate people's birthdays. It's really about creating an extended family and a safe space for people to come um, and really make some necessary changes that are impacting lives. One day I was there by um, the fighting Superchin and the message was around also. It was out already, understand? but I didn't know, understand? And um, I just heard about Super Troopers pass by and said, Super Troopers, where? I don't know. So, they started, I heard, they started with Garlands, understand? And the message come from God to carry, starting the Garlands from the Garlands to the fighting Superchin, from the fighting Kitchen. I mean, for three and a half years, she coped, understand. She's a good lady, understand. And um, I'm grateful to be with her. The bigger picture, the next steps, is about having a, a human hub, a space for everyone that is on the streets or that needs some kind of assistance um, to enroll into our super community, um, to come to the human hub and be a first point of call for someone that needs help, so to sign up. So today is the beginning of, of, of the next steps. And I mean, a, a clear quote that stands true is that in order to begin, you begin. So nothing needs to be perfect. Um, and we've seen how as long as we start, you know, moving forward, we will get there. We're often told, oh, so many homeless people choose to be on the street. Why don't they just go to shelters? Why don't you just rather donate money to shelters? And we know from our experience of speaking to the people on the street that actually, while shelters cater for a certain sector of the homeless population, very many people are not comfortable being in a shelter because of the rules. They don't allow families together. They don't allow men and women to sleep together. You can only stay there for a short period of time. So we thought those were important questions so that we could have almost an answer to say to people, look, the data shows that the vast majority of people are not being accommodated in shelters. I have uh, learned a lot from Super Troopers. It's the, it's the unity and it's the, it's, it's the commitment from people outside Super Troopers who are actually uh, 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 giving a hand in to, to, to Super Troopers uh, uh, activities and programs. And which is something that is a bit difficult for us in the townships in terms of Technologically, we, we are a bit backwards, you know, there's, there's a gap, there's a gap. And so, for, for, in, in terms of networking with people, it becomes a challenge. So, so in, in most cases, we have to actually get out of the township, you know, and, 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 and be more visible. This is all about changing lives. It's all about sharing love. This is a love-filled community. Uh, I believe we've attracted some true, true heartful people, which uh, I'm very protective of the energy that we have in our Super Troopers space. Um, it's a very um, important part of how we move forward. And I believe that the more people with, you know, like-minded kind of um, 
like-minded people with the same vision, with the same intent, the more we come together, the more we can really make an impact. I truly believe that it's up to human beings to make the change, um, and we will. Kiri doesn't ask for much. She never has, and, but she's got huge dreams. And what we've learned is that we certainly don't, believe, don't have any doubt that her dreams will come true. The power and what we've seen happening in this three and a half years really shows me how we can be together. You know, you've, you've got people that live on the streets, people that live in homes. Um, you know, everyone is going through some kind of um, pain, loss, struggle. And the more we come together and just um, help each other and share kindness and show respect and, and kind of pave a way, the more we can actually make um, tangible change that I do believe it's possible. And, and here with Super Troopers we really are committed to achieving that. Kerry is 100% hot. She is genuine, she's authentic. She feels things very deeply and she lives according to her conscience, according to what feels 100% right for her and she is totally herself. It's, it's been an absolute pleasure working with her because she, she lives her truth in a way that is very rare. Sterich Eretz for me is, a, is an opportunity, a reminder for everyone to really know that we can pave the way for ourselves and, and our fellow community. Um, it's, it's really important that people know that um, we are capable to, ha to live in a world filled with, with love and peace and joy and it's very much about you know, the values that we share with each other. Um, if we all live in a world filled with, with love and peace, I mean, we're you know, all able to, to thrive. And when we're all thriving together, it's a real magical world. So for me, uh, Derek Eretz is about uh, living in a, a world of, of wonder. Hineni is an ancient Hebrew phrase that means, here I am. It is a silent call by God nudging us to walk out in faith and make a difference both in our lives and those around us. If you have missed any of our past episodes of Derech Eretz, you will be able to watch them on our Derech Eretz Connect YouTube channel. From me, Romy Stach and the Derech Eretz team, remember, you too can answer Hineni and contribute your talents or time to change someone's life.